to Tome of Uselessness. I'm Devin. I'm Dan. And today we're talking about Harley Quinn. Yeah, a lot of Harley Quinn. <laughs> yeah, so we watched Birds of Prey and the something something Emancipation of Harley Quinn. Yeah. What's the full title? Um, well, the original full title was Birds of Prey, colon, and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. But now they just shortened it to just like Harley Quinn colon Birds of Prey or something like that. Oh, okay. Which also, they should have just called it Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey. Yeah. Which would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, yeah, they changed the name so that more people go see it. Is that it? I guess because people were confused. Because who are the Birds of Prey to oh. a lot of people that don't know? But That's Harley true. Quinn's recognizable. All right. We're also going to uh, talk about the animated series from 2019 called Harley Quinn. Yeah. Uh, which was great. Super great. But first, mm -hmm. things we like. But before that. Before that as well. You may have noticed that we now have a theme song. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's new. It's new. We both like it. Yeah. If it's only taken us three years. Uh, ish. Ish. Yeah. To get one. Yeah. Hooray. Okay. You gotta make those steps. Yeah. Uh, so what do you like this week, Dan? Um, I don't know. I don't... It's weird because I was looking at... at Less than normal. I read this book called Atomic Accidents, mm -hmm. which is a nonfiction book about atomic accidents, accidents throughout the history, <laughs> but basically since the discovery of radioactive elements in, you know, old prospecting times mm -hmm. to, you know, with a more recent, like, Fukushima nuclear disaster and stuff like that. And it was actually pretty interesting. The guy who wrote it, I didn't write down his name, um, but he was clearly, like, in the industry, like, he's designed stuff for nuclear power plants and... Um, is like a scientist clearly himself. So he's kind of had like a, he was, he's, he knows what he's talking about, but he also, he didn't have like a, oh, everything's fine. He was like, yeah. no, the like, you know, back in the old style when, you know, Mary Curie and them, they used to like wear it around there cause they glowed and they're like, it looks good, <laughs> but it's like, no, it was killing you. Right. So, <laughs> Sorry. but I mean, yeah, that was a real thing. Like there was like a tonic that a guy developed and, you know, it was like. It had radium inside of it, which oh if you God. <laughs> take a little bit of radium is like, that basically, what he, it, it gives you like a small, like it feels like a revitalizing boost, oh. but then like, you know, some weirdo billionaire New York guy was just like drinking it like water Oh Jesus! and it gave him massive bone cancer and he died, right? Like so all the way to, and it's so it interesting, like, uh, is that where like the superhero probably like yeah. radioactive spider thing comes from? Oh, probably. And as well, like, um, just when they were developing all the nuclear weapons, and then after that, when they were trying to develop nuclear technology for um, industrial purposes and civilian purposes, because mm -hmm. um, Eisenhower wanted it to be a power generator, not a weapon. Okay. So he, like, they developed the technology and declassified it and just gave it away, essentially, because he was like, I want power for the people. Yay. But also... They, like, they've developed, like, three or four different ones. It, it was really interesting, like, because the accidents that did occur, they were bad. Mm -hmm. But I've always thought, as, aside from, like, Chernobyl, that it's like, oh, you know, oh, man, like, so much stuff happened. Not a lot actually happened, and, like, not a lot of nuclear material got into the world and stuff like that. I mean, they were still bad, of course, but it was interesting. <laughs> there is a type of nuclear reactor, which I didn't know that. This, it's, like, involves uh, using plutonium yeah. and not uranium. Because plutonium de get degrades into a form of uranium that's not as uh, radioactive. Oh, cool. It like, decays differently than other kind of uranium. And it creates more power than you put in. They call it a breeder system. Oh, So it actually, weird. like, breaks the law of thermodynamics in a sense. So yeah. It's like, I thought that's not possible. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, it actually... But it involves, like, you have to use, like, this... You have to use liquid salt to like cool it because it has to be at certain temperatures. It was crazy. It was very informative, interesting book. And even the whole Fukushima thing, terrible, of course, what happened. But uh, they like clamped down on it better than I thought. Because I was always like, uh, didn't that basically poison everything? Yeah. And it did poison some things, but not as much as I not thought. As, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. <laughs> basically, that's what it all came down to. So anyway, it was an interesting read. And he was basically, that was his point. He's like, we've only had this tech since the 40s mm. and they kind of ran away with certain designs where they should have like designed more things and tested more things but it's hard to test something that if it goes wrong it contaminates 
a state. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Right. Yeah. Fair. Okay. So, and Canada is actually a big world leader. We helped develop the first power plant and we had the first power plant and all, mm. like, it was interesting. Cool. Uh, other thing, I've been playing a lot of the Division 2 video game. It's just a loot and shooter online thing. I enjoyed the Division 1, which was Tom Clancy style virus nice. in the city, everything post-apocalyptic. But, you know, you got to go out there and save the people by shooting other people. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And then the last thing, I forgot to mention this last time, was uh, I listened to Cage the Elephant's newest album from 2019 called Social Cues. Oh. Very good. I really enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah. I saw them you've once seen in concert. Them con- yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you've seen them before, right? I've seen them in concert once. They were yeah. quite enjoyable. Cool. They got to, like, it's weird. They they're totally, like, changed their style or sound from when they first started, which some bands do that and it works. Others, you're like, I'm out. <laughs> but still some good music. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's about it. Cool. Uh, well, at the time of recording, the first episode of season two of RuPaul's, season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race came out. Mm. Uh, it was interesting. <laughs> it was a tough, it was a tough first challenge because first of all, they've, they've divided up the group into two groups. So okay. it's only half the queens that you see in the first episode. So presumably you'll see the other half in season, or episode two. Yeah, Maybe. Right. The preview makes it look like they're all mixed together, so who knows what's going on there. Mm. But so the seven girls, uh, their first mini challenge was that they had to do a, like, fashion week fall look and spring look, which was the first challenge of season seven. Right. So they had to have two complete outfits for that. Then they had to do, they had to write their own rap verse. Mm. Of part of a song, okay. which is usually what they do in the like the final episode. So that's I'm switching it up pretty intense for like the first week. Yeah. So then they had to perform it live in front of Nicki Minaj. Oh, wow! Um, and then they had to do sp- like a sparkle inspired look on the runway. So they had to do three looks. Wow! Plus their rap look, plus like writing a rap and choreographing like a dance to go with it. So that's pretty good. Very Sounds good. like a lot. Right now, I'm a fan of Gigi Good. She had really cool looks. Like her first, her fall look was like a pastel motorcycle rider, like with helmet. No, that was her spring look. Mm. She had like bright yellow hair. She looked like anime. And her fall look was like her dressed as like an S and M like horse jockey, <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> which was great. Uh, her entrance look. Oh yeah, they had to do entrance looks too, right? Was her as like a pirate, and mm-hmm. she had like this like gold and blue kind of tapestry jacket with a matching hat and a matching telescope that was all in the same <laughs> fabric. Nice. And then her sparkle look was like this mint green pantsuit that was like sparkly, with a black latex top, and then she did like a helmet, like a wig. So it was covered in, like, it was a black helmet covered in rhinestones. And she looked like she was from, oh, Speed Racer. Mm. Yeah, it was really good. Really (laughs) well done. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, so I'm a fan so far. Very nice. And then aside from that, I haven't had time to really watch anything. uh, Except for videos of people recreating historically accurate Victorian underwear and (laughs) stitching them by hand. I'm sure. On YouTube. 45 minute videos that I'm watching someone just stitch lace on to something. And nice. Apparently that's how I want to spend my time now. <laughs> Gotta relax somehow. <sighs> yes. Just watching people sew. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. Let, let's. What do you want to talk about first? The movie or the show? I assume the movie. Alright. Let's talk about the movie. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous imagination of Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, Dan, did you enjoy the movie? I did enjoy the movie. <laughs> As I previously stated when the last time we recorded and I kind of spoke about it. Right. I really did enjoy it. Uh, I had some... There was a couple problems in my opinion, but overall I really did enjoy it. I really enjoyed it too. I had mm. low, low, low expectations and it exceeded them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like I went in and I think like I was saying, it was like, I was like, I, it's going to be better than Suicide Squad, which is a low hurdle. I understand yeah, that. yeah. 
And it was. <laughs> and it was. She, yeah. she passed and, it. Yeah, and I did enjoy it. Um, but I'll just mention out here. It was so directed by Kathy Yan. Yeah. Written by Christina Hodson. And Paul Dini gets credit because he created Harley Quinn back sure. in the Batman animated days. Yeah. Uh, the budget was $84.5 million. And the box office so far, $188.3 million. Oh, good. Which is taken in. So they're doing all right. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's not like doing terrible. And I wonder about how much like, because usually it's always double yeah, yeah. the budget for kind of marketing and stuff like that. But I wonder if they did more or if they did less or what they did. Because it's also rated R, which I understand yeah. why it's rated R. And it's I'm like, I'm fine with that because I'm an adult. But it's also like, obviously you miss out on that teen audience. Yeah, I feel like it's better than it's rated R though. Sure. Like there's that one scene where they're in a fight and she hides behind a mountain yeah, of cocaine. Yeah, I assume that was what gave it the R. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately when I saw that. Because <laughs> like they're shooting it so that she breathes in and it yeah. almost like, like it's like Popeye with spinach almost. Oh, basically. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I really enjoyed that part. Yeah, as soon as that was kind of raining down on her, I was like, uh, oh yeah, America does not like its drug yeah, use. No. <laughs> <laughs> Even though everyone does drugs in this yeah. America. But, um... Real quick, the cast, as we were talking. So Margot Robbie, of course, back as Harley Quinn. She's great. Yeah. Rosie Perez plays Renee Montoya, who's the cop. Mm -hmm. Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Helena Bertinelli slash Huntress. <laughs> uh, Journey Smollett-Bell, I assume I pronounced that wrong, as Dina Lance slash Black Canary. She's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And you got Ewan McGregor chewing it up as Roman Sionis. Oh my god, Ewan McGregor is so great at this movie. Yeah, he really does, like... <laughs> turn on a dime like yeah. all the time <laughs> uh elena j basco as cassandra kane yeah small pickpocket and then chris messina as victor zaz is cassandra kane like is that a character yes and here's what's hilarious is that i've seen from what i've read because i'm not totally familiar with a lot of the dc yeah. stuff is that character is sometimes the daughter of batman and catwoman Excellent. And sometimes ha so it has random cat-related powers, even though those people are both un not powered. But anyway, whatever. Okay. And also other times she's like a mute assassin or something like that kind of thing. Or she is the assassin. Yeah, there's basically been a couple iterations, and I guess this is a new iteration. Because <laughs> I'm like, I know that name, Cassandra Cade. Like, mm -hmm. I remember it from somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure it's probably showed up in, like, well, Batman the Animated yeah. and other things as well, so... Um, so I was like, not one of those people that I'm like, oh, this character, she, this, she's a little girl. They can go anywhere with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Um, just like while we're talking about the cast quick. Sure. Ewan McGregor was giving me like strong Sam Rockwell vibes in this. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah like Sam that. Rockwell in, um, Charlie's Angels, the first one. Right. Two, Charlie's Angels 2000. <laughs> When yeah, he plays yeah. the, like, tech nerd that turns out to be the e bad guy. Evil, yeah. Yeah. Because we just have to circle back to Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Always. Apparently. In some ways, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he was giving me, like, so strong Sam Rockwell vibes. Sure. Yeah. Which I like. Well, yeah. And like I was saying, he was, you know... That's the only person I... Other person I would have casted in the role. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, he was, like, he was, you know, suave ish but greasy club night guy owner and yeah. then like we're just you know trying to be all the underworld yeah hey i'm gonna run this town and everyone's like no you're not gonna no, run you're anything not. yeah <laughs> <laughs> sit down you wish <laughs> yeah basically right so yeah i really actually i liked his performance and oh no i thought it was great yeah i liked most of the, I, I think like out of everybody in the cast um the only one i had rosie perez maybe because she was just to be in generic gruff cop yeah, but well, everyone else, I really like their performance. <laughs> I, I agree with that because I feel like everyone else was like had a character mm -hmm. and she was just like generic cop, yeah. which like they even met a comment on in the movie where they're like, yeah. she talks like an 80s cop, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> but um, it, it made her less likable yeah. because she didn't, she wasn't a thing. But it's weird because they actually, like, do a good job of explaining her motivation for being... Oh, yeah. ...disenchanted gruff cop. Yeah, totally. <laughs> right? Yeah, she's being passed on promotions and they give her case to, like, the, some other generic cop guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I liked all that stuff, but, uh, yeah, like you said, her character was just kind of... Meh. Yeah. I re also really liked... It was, like, a little uh, more low-key, but, um, what's her name? I don't know. Huntress. Yeah. What's that? What's that actress's name? Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Yeah. 
she was really good at kind of like playing a wannabe badass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she did a really good job with yeah. that. That was really unexpected when they did that scene where, yeah, she's like practicing in the in, mirror. In the mirror. <laughs> yeah. so I am Huntress. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's good. Hey, you gotta you gotta make a good impression. <laughs> good, good. I am Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked again uh, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Yeah, she's great. I One of my also. favorite scenes mm -hmm. in the movie is when she breaks into the police. Yeah. Um, precinct. Precinct. Sure. Uh, because she just like she just radiates that big harley quinn energy <laughs> yeah she's just having fun yeah and causing chaos causing chaos <laughs> she's shooting like bean bags and like like smoke bombs smoke bombs and glitter and, and confetti <laughs> yeah. right yeah like it's so well done mm -hmm. that was a really well executed scene it seemed like with this movie mm. the people who wrote the script were familiar with Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> that seems outlandish. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. It's like a fan wrote it almost, yeah. right? Like, well, and, and I, one thing I did like is, I, and I can't remember, I haven't seen Suicide Squad since I saw it. Yeah. But like they brought in a couple times where she like does dip into Harleen Quinzel and just like psychoanalyzes something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I like that. She's smart. She is a doctor. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I like that a lot. Even that scene where she's in the grocery store with Cassandra and then she's like, how do you become like me? She's like, no, no, no. No one's like me. And then no, she yeah. just kind of gives her whole backstory. Yes, okay. <laughs> so I like that. But I guess uh, before we continue so much liking everything and not liking everything, basic plot is she breaks up with a Joker. Wait, can I oh, okay. say one more thing? Oh, okay, sure. There was one continuity error that I spotted. Oh. And I have to talk about it or I'll forget. Okay, pray tell. At the beginning. Yes. They show a shot of her on the couch upset, mm -hmm. and her hair is cut, Yeah. but then the scene after that is her actually cutting her hair. Sure. So I thought that was, like, out of order. But, and that was, that was something I was going to talk about, is Harley Quinn is an unreliable narrator. <laughs> That's true. So, because she's messed up. So I, that was one of the things I liked in the movie, is everything's disjointed. <laughs> I did like the disjointed bit, but I thought in that sequence... Yeah. It didn't make sense, whereas other times it does. Right. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I did not spot that, but yeah. good catch. <laughs> of course, I'm going to catch what her hair is. <laughs> okay, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of shocked when she cut her hair. But yeah, so it's her breaking up with the Joker, but she hasn't told people. Yeah. And then so she's kind of going, there's this, like, this montage in the beginning where she's kind of still living her life and people still assume she's with the Joker, so they're kind so of standoffish. Yeah, standoffish. Yeah. And then she blows up. Ace or Axis Chemicals. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably Axis is what it should be. Yeah. And then everyone's like, oh, they broke up. And then so then we get a lot of people attacking her. Roman Sionis eventually kidnaps her. And she makes a deal to ca track down the diamond that has the Bertinelli fortune information engraved on it. They're banking information. Banking information. Yeah. There's accounts. There's billions of dollars hidden away. Because the Bertinelli family was the crime boss family, they were the richest family, and they were slaughtered. They were all killed. Yeah. Except Huntress. <laughs> but we don't find that out till later. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much near the end of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's some scenes, some violence, some non-violence. So Black Canary works for... Roman Sionis. Yeah. Roman. Yeah. Uh, she's sent with his other henchmen to pick up the diamond but it gets pickpocketed by this little girl mm -hmm. and then harley quinn has to go and, and the girl gets picked up by the police so harley quinn goes to the police office and then steals the little girl yeah. everyone's after them she ends up becoming friends with the little girl which is a super cute scene when they're <laughs> eating like the cereal cereal <laughs> yeah. on the couch <laughs> turns out the little girl ate the diamond yes they have to wait for her to shit it out and when I say little girl, she's like, what, 14, 13? Yeah, probably something along yeah. those lines. And so her house <laughs> gets blown up where she's staying. She was sold out by the proprietor. And then she's like, okay, I'm just going to make a deal. Get rid of the kid. Yeah. You know, uh, let's just meet. I'll give it to, to Roman. I don't care. Get the money, get protection, etc. cetera. And uh, then she has a turn of heart mm -hmm. because the cop comes Drunk, which is great. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they have a pretty good fight there. And Roman shows up with a ton of goons, and he's just like, just kill everyone, we'll figure it out. <laughs> so and fight them off. So Harley Quinn is in a haunted house, no, a fun house yeah. with drunk cop, little girl, 
Black Canary shows up because she's kind of got a relationship with the little girl. Well, she's driving Zaz. Oh, and Zaz. she's driving Zaz. Yeah. That's right. And uh, Huntress shows up because... To kill Zaz. To kill Zaz because that's the last person on her list. That's right. So then Roman shows up with an army of thugs. Yeah. And they attack the fun house and then they have to fight their way out. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, there's just like a, there's a final chase sequence. Yeah. And uh, they end up on the, the pier, which was pretty cool and was all, you know, smoky and etc. You know what I kind of liked is that the little girl, like Harley Quinn comes to save her. Yes. But she kind of saves herself because yeah. she happens to have a grenade. Yes. That she puts in his pocket or whatever and yeah. pulls a pin and. Yeah. Reverse pickbox him, yeah. basically. And he's totally. Like, Here's his grenade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Roman is dead. Yeah. The day is won. I was surprised that he just exploded. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess he won't be in the sequel. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that uh, some comic book movies, uh, but even going back to like the Spider Man movies, they just keep killing all their villains. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, well, I'd like to see your Doc Ock again. Well, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so, uh, and then they're all kind of having a good breakfast meal, and then Cassandra and Harley Quinn abscond with B- Canary's car. Yep. And, and the, the diamond. And the diamond. Which they pawn. Yeah. Which I just <laughs> love, that they weren't even going to try to, like, use the codes or... I think she said, because in that final uh, narration, she, like, gave the codes to Bertinelli. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, then yeah. she pawns the And diamond. then she just pawns the diamond. <laughs> yeah. And then they take the cash and they run. So she can fund her mercenary business. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And that's the movie. I really liked it. Yeah, I You know what really it was? It. One of the things that was good about it? Mm. It was colorful. Mm-hmm. Like you would expect a Harley Quinn movie to be. Yeah. And you know what else was good? The Joker wasn't in it. Yeah. Like he was a presence, <laughs> but they didn't have him as a character. Yeah, there was like a, you know, body double type shot in the one scene and that yeah. was like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was it, a so. good choice, I thought. Yeah. Well, and that was the whole point. It was to just kind of focus in on... Her and the the birds of prey and stuff like that, and I really mm-hmm. like that. I was hoping for a little more color, like mm. it was colorful, but like maybe because again, DC has desaturated some of oh, their stuff yeah. versus like the Marvel type thing. They didn't want to cross too far in that line, but I was also like, yeah, it's Harley Quinn. You could just bump up some of them colors a little more. <laughs> I liked her, uh, like when they're fighting in the fun house. Mm-hmm. I liked her like yellow jumpsuit yeah. that like stood out really nicely. Yeah. With her roller skates too. That was yes. a nice touch. <laughs> when she put those on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was in the movie, not the show. I'm getting the movie the show mixed up, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Because nice. 'Cause I'm like remembering a scene, I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure that was animated. Yeah, but yeah. in the movie she does skate in a roller derby. Yeah, or, in the beginning yeah, okay. when she's like, I'm out on my own and yeah. she's making friends and yeah. she's like punching everybody yeah. and i'm like i don't think that's how roller derby works but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> she has the protection of the joker it's yeah fun. exactly she's punching everybody over um yeah like I, and like i said i did like how it was disjointed but it worked yeah. for this movie because it's harley quinn telling the story and then she's like oh wait no i gotta go back and tell you these other random details and then you yeah know, we get some good uh voiceover of her at different points which i liked <laughs> yeah i liked it too mm-hmm uh, like when they do a flashback and they're like four minutes earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, and just even a lot of the stuff with uh, when someone's like coming to take their revenge and it just flashes to a scene of like them or her doing stuff or like what they're kind of Oh, yeah, but yeah, her. yeah. <laughs> that was really <laughs> and, great. Yeah, like that was some good color stuff, like as well. Like it would just it paused, you know, freeze frame and something would draw on the screen. And yeah. I was like, I like that with the, the Roman, like. All yeah, the stuff that all she, the stuff that he's just a list yeah, of like <laughs> rotating lists for like ten seconds of this yeah. stuff. And I was like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, so what were what what did you what were your what did you not like about it? Well I think like I was just kinda of talking about earlier was just um it, they're like I said, they're you minor complaints. No, no. <laughs> They're just minor complaints. Like I was saying, like the Rosie Perez character could yeah. have done something a little different there. Um, maybe a little more color. And, um, I, I thought there was, there was a little too much slowdown speed up in a couple of the fights mm. and, um, you know, there was like the pop song, uh, in a lot of the fights, Yeah, which I was like, it didn't bother me this time. Really? That, cause I know that's a huge pet peeve. I know this. it's huge. It is. <laughs> but I think, I think it's because they balance the volume. Okay. With mm. the sounds of the fight and the sound of the song. Right. Where sometimes in movies, they just 
they wipe out the sounds of the fight and it's just the song. Maybe sure. that bothers me a bit more. Also, I love Heart and Barracuda. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. So I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah, it didn't bother me this time. You know, it was a, it was a random thought here. It was just at the end of the movie, I was watching the credits and there was like a ton of visual effects work. And I was like, that seems so weird. But then, like, thinking back, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, she bounces that bat and then, like, throws the phone. And, and there's, there's just, a hyena? There's a hyena in it <laughs> as well. But, uh, like, you would get a real hyena, right? <laughs> yeah, but you can't have Margot Robbie splitting a Twizzler with a real yeah, hyena. Yeah, I understand that. But it was just, like, <laughs> <laughs> but it just seems like for a movie like this where it was scaled back, there's no blue laser in the sky, there were still tons of CG work in it. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's CG in everything now. Oh, I, yeah, 100%. I was talking to a CG artist... I might have told this story before, but he was saying that even in, like, The Devil Wears Prada, mm. there's a ton of CG because they have to make New York look like New York. Yeah, yeah. Where no, it's, I, like, yeah. it doesn't always, right? Sure, and, and like, I was talking about, I think, previously as well, like, where, yeah, they just, they'll be, they'll shoot something and they'll be like, oh, we just edit that. It, you know, like, there's a coffee cup somewhere. We just take it out yeah, by yeah, CG yeah. or whatever. Right? Or, like, <laughs> the sky is not blue enough yeah, or exactly. whatever, right? Yeah, yeah so like, it's just, like, there was still... There's CG and everything. Yeah, but it was they just They had to crazy. go in and desaturate all those colors, Dad. <laughs> That's quite true, quite true. They had to do all that desaturation. Manually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think like I was saying, overall my complaints are just kind of minor-ish yeah. uh, versus like the movie was a good movie. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really have any complaints Yeah, at all. I felt like, um, I felt sometimes stuff with Black Canary like at her house and stuff mm. slowed down the pace a little bit. Right. Uh, but that's kind of, you kind of need that because some of it's pretty of, frenetic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, that's, like, the only, like, minor complaint I right. had. I also know you didn't like this, the fight scene in the funhouse? No, I was... <laughs> so, I liked... Because you hate women? <laughs> <laughs> I liked the fight scene. I just felt that there could have been some more funhouse elements to the fight scene. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, I thought they did a good job because they had the slide. They had the spinning thing. And the tongues. And the tongues. I thought it was okay. I don't know. I just felt like there could have been a little more. The mirror kind of. Yeah. Thing. I don't know. I just... There could have been some more. Instead of them all punching, having to punch or bat every goon, there could have been a trap door that the person falls uh, in. Or you know what I mean? Just yeah, I see what you mean. Stuff like that. Because yeah. otherwise it was just them punching and kicking 50 goons, right? So. I did like it, though, because I liked the way the fight scene flowed, where they were all kind of, like, taking a turn, kind mm -hmm. of making sure the, the Cassandra, Cassandra was okay. Yeah. yeah. And I also did, like, in, especially in that one, it highlighted, like, Huntress is just... She doesn't care. She's yeah. like stabbing people. Yeah. And, and Black Canary's martial arts. And yeah. then Hardy's, you know, punching and, and, yeah. and batting people around. Yeah. And stuff like that. So there was a good... On roller skates. On roller skates. So there was a good mix of stuff going on there. I liked the... They were like, when did you have time to change your shoes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got that cool... Because I usually hate car chase scenes. Mm -hmm. But I enjoyed this one because she was she on was roller, roller skates. skates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and just the, the gearing up scene previous to that was really good, too, because she's like, well, what about all this? And they're like, there's nothing there. Yeah, there's and nothing like, there. Oh, yeah. that jerk. Just a closet full of outlines. Yeah, yeah. gun outlines and stuff like that. Right? <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, it was kind of pretty unexpected that that ended in a car, that became a car chase scene. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's not how I was expecting it to go, no. kind of thing. The, yeah, one thing about this movie is that it, it didn't follow what I thought it was going to do. Mm. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I also really, it was a little out of place because they didn't really do it any other time, but I did really like when she gets uh, punched in the face when she's mm. tied up. Yeah. And she kind of goes into this like weird Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, Monroe number. Yeah. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of great. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Like I said, uh, there was my, my problems with the movie are minor problems, essentially. Also, I feel like I should say it. Dan doesn't actually hate women. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. I just like bugging you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, should we switch gears and start talking about the... Just before we do, I, I didn't know if you were aware of this, uh, but Margot Robbie produced this movie, right? I did know that because I saw her name on the production. Uh, and I thought it was kind of interesting that it had a female writer and director mm -hmm. because Wonder Woman also has a female writer and director mm -hmm. and it did really well. And Harley Quinn. Yeah. And so maybe, not to get political, but <laughs> maybe we should let women 
tell stories about women. Sure. <laughs> um, but <laughs> just you just know, throwing it out there. just throwing that out there. <laughs> well, you know, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, especially at this point in time, Hollywood is a business, and they're gonna follow whatever makes them the most money. Yeah. Right? So, no, totally yeah. right. But I'm just saying, like maybe. Maybe, you know, women are su- a little bit more successful about mm-hmm. uh, describing how women are. <laughs> uh, no, I know what I was going to say is that her production company also produced I, Tanya. Oh, I really liked I, Tanya. Yeah, but those movies were, like, smaller budgeted, whereas this yeah. was, like, the a biggest big... budget thing that uh, her company has produced. And also on the slate coming up is Tank Girl. <gasps> And is she going to be Tank Girl? I either assume she's going to be Tank Girl or, you know, involved in Tank Girl in some way. And then they do have slated the Gotham Sirens. <gasps> yeah, Which is what I've been talking about for like <laughs> yeah, three years. <laughs> you know, Birds of Prey, it was a great movie, yeah. but it really should have been the Gotham, the Gotham Sirens. Sirens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but that would be great. Mm-hmm. So yeah, oh, that, that, those are on the slate. She'd be a good Tank Girl. Yeah. <laughs> so good, good for her. She's killing it. Yeah. She's doing really well. Totally. So. I mean, one thing I do... Obviously, she's wearing makeup and stuff like that, but, like, what kind of makeup is she wearing that it always... Like, her hands still look white. Like, she is white. Well, I think it's because she fell in the chemical. No, I mean, physically, what is she wearing? Oh! (laughs) Like, I'm just like, dang! Okay, so... Because I was trying to find it out, but I couldn't find it. It's probably, like... A, a super high end, blah blah blah. But if because she also has fake tattoos over her skin too, right? Like if you did want to do something like that, Kat Von D has a um, has a foundation concealer and powder that's mm. like a true like goth white. Yeah. And it is pretty transfer proof, so mm. something like that. But it, or she's probably wearing something like Krylon. And it's probably like painted on and then sealed, right? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that's what, like obviously like she's sitting through a, a yeah. good amount of makeup. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then having fake tattoos put on her as well. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it's probably some good body paint. Yeah. Like that's what I would assume. But yeah, like like I said, even her palms and everything, it's like it's well done. They, and like again, they probably watched... CG touch up stuff. So. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Have you watched Skin Wars? On... No, no, because you, you told me about reality that. shows. Well, I'm not a fan of them, and it's if, not my if you, area of, like, interest. If you do want to watch list, people out there, yeah. if you want to watch a show that's about body painting, I would recommend Skin Wars. It's really you, good. I'm pretty sure you've recommended it previously. Well, I'm recommending it again. Copy that. But anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. I just dabbed. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, probably a good time to move on to the show, I guess. And, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, um, the movie... Is about the emancipation of Harley Quinn, mm-hmm. and the show is basically about the emancipation of Harley Quinn as well. Yeah, but animated. <laughs> but animated, and more in depth. Yeah, but so this one was written and executive produced by Justin Halpern, Patrick Shoemaker, and Dean Laurie. So. Oh, there goes my theory about goes women, theory. <laughs> women writing. <women. laughs> <laughs> but uh, I guess yeah. Well, and. There was some other, there was maybe there was more names here or there, but that was the kind of three standout names that I saw. And then the voice cast, we have, uh, I'm going to pronounce these all wrong, uh, Kelly Kuko, or Kuko? How do you she pronounce her last name? Penny from... Yeah, but how do you pronounce uh, her last name? Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Anyway, she's Harley. Lake Bell as Poison Ivy. Alan Tudyk, he's here as the Joker. Clayface and Calendar Man. Jason Alexander plays Cy Borgman. Uh, Diedrich Bader is our Batman. Ron Fuchs. King Shark, Tony Hale does Dr. Psycho and Felix Faust. And Who's Jade... Tony Hale? I don't know. I'm sure that... I know that name. Yeah. Wait, was he the hook hand on Arrested Development? Maybe? I don't actually know his name. <laughs> I think it... Hang on, keep reading. And well, and the last name I have here is J.B. Smoove. I think it is. I'm going to look this up. Here, use my phone because you're not going to get reception without being on okay, it. Okay, just, just Google Tony Hale. Ooh. Tony Hale. <laughs> you gotta be on the Wi-Fi. He's on Veep, too. Did you ever watch Veep? I've seen a few episodes. It's supposed to be the best show in the history of the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you're right. I'm right! Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Tony uh, Hale. Tony Hale. <laughs> and then, of course, there's, like, tons of... I didn't get the whole... Because there's, like, Phil LaMar shows up and Will Sasso and Wanda Sykes. And tons of people show up yeah. to do other voices. But that's the main kind of cast. Cool. Uh, and there was 13 episodes in season one. Yeah, and uh, I liked it a lot. Yeah, it's super good. <laughs> it's uh, 
I don't know. I haven't watched every single animated show about right. DC characters, but I feel like it's very adult. Yes. It's definitely not for children. No, I think everything else they make is usually aimed at it's general like more audiences. PG or, <laughs> yeah. yeah, or like even 14 A. Yeah, yeah. But this, they're swearing. Which uh, I liked how it was like right off the bat. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is not a kid's show. <laughs> yeah, which I was like, oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. They say the F bomb yeah. a few times. Like immediately. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Um, there's like pretty graphic violence, yes. which I appreciated. Yeah. yeah, again, just right off the start, Joe <laughs> Harley Quinn smashes a guy's leg and he just like collapses and you see the bone come out and there's like a pool of blood and he's on the ground screaming and she's just like, are you going to shut up? And he's like, no, my leg. And she's like, oh, you'll go into shock. <laughs> and he's just like, ah, and she's like, ah, there it is. <laughs> and I was just like, holy crap. <laughs> Normally you don't see that kind of thing. <laughs> No. Yeah. It was great. Mm -hmm. it, and, like, in that way, the violence reminded me a lot of, like, Metalocalypse. Right. Where it would be, like, <laughs> unexpe gruesome. Yeah. unexpected, gruesome, and graphic. Yeah. <laughs> Which I like. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, I thought uh, Kaylee Cuckoo... Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kuoko. Kuoko? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I thought she did an excellent job voicing Harley. Me too. And I thought that Lake... Lake Bell. Bell yeah. did an excellent job voicing Ivy. Actually, yes. it was like top to bottom, I thought, super well cast. Yeah. No, uh, that, was, that was my first note. Oh, I'm sorry. Great voice cast. No, that's I'm totally <laughs> agreeing with you. And I really liked... Uh, I thought there was like the versions of some of the characters we get are super fun oh my compared God, to, yeah. to like the normal serious DC universe of these characters. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, so like characters for me like Clayface, King Shark, Bane, Gordon, and then I don't know if this guy's in anything else, uh, but Kite Man. Kite Man, <laughs> he's so great. <laughs> he's hilarious. <laughs> so, and then Dr. Psycho, his, the whole version of him is just like crazy ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not familiar with Dr. Psycho at all. Is he more of a... I looked him up because yeah. I also was unfamiliar with Dr. Psycho. Turns out he is a Wonder Woman villain, which is how he's introduced oh, nice. from back in the day. And nice. he is noted for his misogyny and mis and that kind of behavior. So I was like, oh, okay, when they throw him in there, dropping the C-bomb. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ah, very nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Clayface was also hilarious as, like, the aspiring yeah. actor. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Um, but I liked, I really liked the friendship that Harley and Ivy have, mm -hmm. yeah. the develop. Um, I also, I kind of liked, at first, I was not sure of it at first, but I liked Poison Ivy's look, how mm -hmm. they kind of gave her clothing. Yeah. Instead right, because she's usually essentially nude. Yeah, well, she's <laughs> or usually, she wears a shirt. <laughs> she usually has that, like, uh, green bustier onesie type outfit like a kind of like a green playboy bunny almost yeah well or like i said uh, yeah like in the arkham games she's essentially wears like a green shirt and panties and that's like it. oh yeah okay <laughs> so yeah i i'm thinking like more of like the batman the animated series yeah. she's kind of in that green onesie thing yes so it was nice that she had pants yeah. and a shirt and a jacket yeah i was I appreciated that I liked how, it, as well, the whole time, she's like, I'm not... She's like, I'm just an eco-terrorist. I'm not a... Yeah, I'm not a villain. villain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. Not a villain. <laughs> uh, Joker was great, mm -hmm. but just the Joker. Nothing yeah. really changed with that. Joker. No, of course not. And yeah. it, that was, I think, half the point. Yeah. <laughs> that he's the same. And he's the same. Yeah. She's trying to grow. And, and, and it did have that great, like, commie dynamic like you're saying between poison ivy and harley quinn where poison ivy's like don't do that and she's like but <laughs> <laughs> and she's always just like going off on her own speed <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> kind of thing right so i like that a lot um one before we kind of maybe get into some stuff but it was so 26 episodes were ordered for the show oh and so i guess they've made all 26 and season one was of course chopped in and being the first 13 season two will be the second 13 oh cool and I'm that's glad that there's gonna be a season two yeah and it's meant to air uh april 3rd 2020 oh nice so coming up so, so i think i don't know we're gonna have to watch season two and talk about it well of course yeah but like i caught this initially on adult swim uh, but it's available on the dc streaming service so i don't know if there'll be a delay oh i see i don't know what that deal is there so i just kept seeing clips of it on youtube oh yeah and i'm like oh this actually looks interesting yeah i was flipping through tv randomly and then i was like harley quinn what is that and i clicked on it and i was like 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a Harley Quinn show, and this actually looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> so, I don't know what, how you kind of wanted to do stuff here. Like, I got a little blurb about all 13 episodes, but... Um, yeah, go blurb away. All right, well, well, just the first episode, how she breaks up with the Joker. Yeah. And then, I like, the whole... Like, the immediate... Like, it's your favorite kind of comedy, where she's like... I won't be in Arkham at night. Hard cut six months later. <laughs> that is my favorite kind of comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, you know that's going to happen. Right? It's so funny to yeah. me. <laughs> and then um, when they finally eventually break out, and even she doesn't want to break out, Poison Ivy has to like, force break force her. It, yeah. <laughs> and she gets back with the Joker, and then Poison Ivy sets up that elaborate ruse with the Riddler to show... And Batman. And Batman to show... Uh, Harley that Joker doesn't love her essentially yep yeah hilarious stuff but yeah that whole her time in Arkham was hilarious <laughs> um the episode two is when they crash that bar mitzvah oh my god that was great yeah she wants to get into the Legion of Doom she wants to get into the Legion she of Doom she knows they're gonna be at this party yeah yeah but yeah she doesn't know what it is she's just like oh there's a party hosted by the Legion of Doom let's go and I love that when she first shows up scene and it's just like shows just her on you know and she's like coming in all baller with the shades and the tiger and like splashing champagne everywhere <laughs> and then they you know do the reverse shot and it's a bar mitzvah <laughs> it, it really is my favorite kind of comedy when it's like expectation yeah. and then instantly subverting it <laughs> <laughs> well and just the whole because she's like i'm gonna steal from the gotham mint because that's where the party takes place yeah and so she does like this big elaborate break-in and it turns out it's just like actors and <laughs> it was just meant for the kid to for like... the kid because <laughs> it's a uh, penguin's nephew yeah yeah and she like cripples all these poor <laughs> actor these <troops>. actors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and <laughs> because of her actions they get into a fight with some of the Legion of Doom guys and Kite Man <laughs> with Bane. <laughs> it's just like, you know, Bane activates his, like, drugs and he just becomes huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, hey, can you just scooch over? He's like, party coordinator. That's my hand in there. <laughs> oh, Kite Man. Yeah. <clears throat> Which, that was his first introduction, I guess, of Kite yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. He's not a character, is he? Like, in the I don't think so. Comics? I think he was no. just made up for this. I hope so. Yeah, because he was pretty Although, hilarious. I kind of hope he was, like, a character from the 50s or yeah, something. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, that they're bringing back. Yeah, because he thinks Ivy's hitting on him when she's like, oh, let's go back to my place to get this mm -hmm. antidote for these kids. <laughs> and he's like, oh, misread the situation. <laughs> <laughs> just naked in her bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, episode three is when she's like, okay... I gotta get a crew because she tries to break in to a train to see the nuke mm -hmm. but joker shows up and he's got a crew yeah and opens those doors uh and so she gets dr psycho and clayface to join but nice. the scene where she's at that bar and being like join come work for me and like you know everyone's like oh no uh i gotta go do this other thing and like <laughs> jump in a death portal and stuff like that and then kite man shows up and he's like you know, gonna plan a robbery or something. Not sure exactly what. We'll see what happens. And like everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I'll join up." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, and then they go and break into Max Zeus's house to steal his gold medals. Nice. Yeah. This is ones that didn't work. Oh, they didn't yeah. work. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, you can tell. Tell me the plot. Well, but I'm just gonna agree with whatever you said. Okay. Did you see episode four then? No. Oh, okay. Three sorry. and four didn't work, but five did. Oh, okay. Four was also really great. It was probably one of my favorites. Where she's like, "I need a nemesis," because every time the Joker fights Batman, it's a big thing. Uh huh. So she steals Batman's car, <laughs> <laughs> and then she, um, Robin shows up, like the new Robin. It's Damian Wayne, which is um. Bruce Wayne's son. Okay. And he's like, she's like, I'm not fighting you, you're a kid. You know? <laughs> and so she just kind of leaves him on a meat hook and then like walks away. <laughs> and then he goes on like the, the Tanya show to be all like, yeah, Harley and I fought and it was pretty epic and everything. <laughs> and she's like, what? I didn't fight this kid? Because uh -uh. then everyone's on Harley's back for fighting a kid. <laughs> and so they set up this big elaborate uh, thing with King Shark where they captured Damien again and hang him over the shark tank and like oh if you don't tell the truth the shark's gonna eat you and stuff like that and then he breaks down and like he's like oh I lied and everything but they're on the Tanya show nice <laughs> but then blood falls into the tank and then the shark goes nuts <laughs> <laughs> and then Batman has to show up and then there actually is this huge big fight and everything <laughs> it's a really good episode <laughs> nice nice yeah I really enjoyed that one which led into episode five like I said when they get evicted 
So they're trying to find a lair. A lair, yeah. And they've been evicted. Yeah. And the real estate agent uh, basically asks Harley Quinn what she wants. And yeah. she freezes up. Because <laughs> she's like, I don't know. I don't know what I want. <laughs> so then uh, Clayface, King Shark, Dr. Psycho, and Ivy go into her brain. Yeah. To try to, like, figure out what's going on. Yeah. Or at least her knock out. her out of being comatose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, they go in there, and they're not supposed to touch anything, and Harley touches something, because she sees her memory of, like, her falling in the mm -hmm. uh, chemicals, but it's all, like, messed up. Yeah, it like, glitches out. out. Yeah. So, uh, it sets off an alarm system, and a bunch of <laughs> tiny... Tiny Harleys. Tiny Harleys start uh, attacking them. And uh, they go into her subconscious, mm -hmm. and Frankie Muniz is there. Yeah. <laughs> did Frankie Muniz voice himself? He did. Oh, that made me so happy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. Yeah. Uh, and I love that there's, there's that one where uh, Clayface is like, if only we had a Deus Ex Machina, and then <laughs> he shows, <laughs> he shows up. up, and then King Shark's like, ah, oh, too bad you didn't get that Machina, but good thing that other dude showed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so great. Yeah. But anyway, she goes to her island of repressed memories yeah. she finds the memory and she sees that he didn't push her she jumped yeah which was something like the whole time when she's like man when that guy pushed me and i was like i'm pretty sure she jumped, jumped right yeah, like yeah. I, was i like wrong about her origin yeah <laughs> <laughs> so turned out i wasn't wrong she repressed the memory which yeah. i liked <laughs> yeah i liked that too yeah. and then she uh um goes into her memory and changes it yeah. and says that's not my origin my origin is when i like broke up with the joke broke up with you and yeah. gave me back your suit and stuff yeah yeah and then they get out of the head and then uh what's the grandpa's name sigh sigh joins her group. yeah because he was trying he, to kill them all he thought they were he dead was, <laughs> he was trying to burn their bodies yeah and they find out that they're in an abandoned mall which is gonna be their lair yeah haha <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so episode six, when they're going to steal from Wayne Tech. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> and then we get a lot of Gordon in this one, who the whole time is like this just disheveled, beaten down cop <laughs> who's just been on the job too long. <laughs> I'm just like a loser. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, he's using the bat signal just to summon Batman because he just wants to talk to him. to his wife. <laughs> yeah. It's like, Are, aren't we friends? He's like, no, we're work colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> just wants to talk to him <laughs> and uh harley kind of screws up the job instead of stealing the invisibike she's like oh there's something behind something that's even more sensitive and it's just like a little iphone kind of thing <laughs> it's a button it's like no one knows what it does until <laughs> <laughs> she presses it and it teleports her to the back cave yes yeah and uh also clayface gets his arm chopped off yes sorry. which becomes evidence yeah. which becomes a baby clayface <laughs> yes which becomes gordon's new best friend because yeah. batman won't talk to him about his marriage <laughs> yeah there's a the wonderful montage of them doing stuff <laughs> yeah but it was all in gordon's head <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh. <laughs> and it ends up with like a shootout mm -hmm. on the roof with harley batman Clayface, Gordon, mm -hmm. Clayface's hand. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Harley realizes through Gordon's actions that she has, she's been pushing aside her friend's well-being to achieve her goal. Yeah. So she has a little growth. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, all right. And Batman, because Batman was doing the same thing, because yeah, he was ignoring Gordon. Batman, yeah. Yeah. Batman screensaver, though, with yeah. <laughs> Gordon and him at a birthday party. Yeah. Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she... Uh, because King Shark gets arrested. I love that. Because they're like doing the oh, montage, yeah. like the heist scenes. She's like, you go in, cause a distraction, and he immediately just gets drugged and, and, and like beaten and arrested. And arrested. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, episode seven with the Queen of Fables getting out of the tax code. Yeah, I really liked the Queen of Fables. Yeah. Is that like a regular Again, I don't I don't know. She's don't... like it's a cool idea to have a villain. That has a storybook that yeah. can come to life. Just summons creatures from the storybook. And it was voiced by Wanda Sykes, which is yes. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so she comes out and then Harley like breaks her out of, uh, she was supposed to go to Arkham, breaks her out of that. And then Ivy's like, no, you don't understand. Don't team up with her. She is <laughs> legit evil. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she's like, uh, you're, you're a bad guy, but you're a good person. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, they, uh. They want to steal some stuff. Queen of Fables murders the whole family. <laughs> so good. Yeah, and uh, so they they break it off, and 
What a nice setup. Oh, yeah. It's one person from the family survives. And then That's he gets right. powers from the electric fence instead of dying. <laughs> Comes back for revenge. And then Harley, you know, is like, oh, I'll give you up. No problem. But she did a switcheroo with the shield. That's right. And then saves Queen of Fables and knocks the bad guy out. With it, yeah. And then the bad guy, the the guy that from the family is yeah. having his moment, and Queen of Fables just comes and stabs him in the face. Yeah, which is that like unexpected, super brutal violence that is great. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, she she's like leaving because she's like, okay, yeah, and then just, oh my god, I can't believe I for, almost forgot to kill this guy. After all that talk about ending the bloodline, and I almost forgot to yeah. end the bloodline. <laughs> But yeah, the episode nine was like lots of plot. Uh, that was one of the ones you were saying. I don't think that worked correctly for you, unfortunately. Uh, um, what happened in episode nine? That's one. Oh, sorry. No. Episode eight. I'm skipping an episode. Oh, okay. That's where they go to Legion of Doom, where they get that invite to go. Oh, yeah. No, I did to go, see that they go to, Yeah, they yeah. go to the party. But yeah. there's the Aquaman heist in the beginning. Yeah, because Aquaman is so good at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, they so they get invited, they go to the Legion of Doom, there's like a get together, and Lex tells Ivy that he's like, the only reason we invited her was because we want you in the Legion of Doom. Yeah, and she's like, oh, just let her in, she's yeah. you know, you'll, but they're like, no, no, we only want Ivy. Yeah, but then there's the switcheroo, which maybe Lex was playing everybody at the time. Yeah, because Ivy is like, they don't want you, yeah. like, come with me, we'll get matching jumpsuits yeah. that say, yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then... Then it's revealed that Harley is in the Legion of Doom, so yeah. she takes it as her friend not believing in her. Yes. Because, yeah, so Aquaman shows up to that get-together, <laughs> and Harley Quinn, they fight, and etc. And, the, and she breaks the aquarium <laughs> so that all the fish all friends the die. <laughs> like how she was like, oh, there's a pool down the street, and he's like, oh yeah, because water's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> that is super funny. Yeah. <laughs> and I like I like that one as well because... Uh, like, other people try to fight Aquaman, and, like, they're just failing, and Black Manta's there. And... Yeah. Yeah, great stuff in the show, for sure. Um, so, yeah, episode nine was, sorry, the one. <laughs> also, oh, there's, when this, this is just a side note, yeah. when, like, the fish are all on the ground, and Bane's <laughs> stepping on yeah. them, and he's <laughs> stepping on them. <laughs> well, they're not, because they're all talking to Aquaman, they're all yeah. like, help us, please, no, yeah. you're dying. <laughs> and Bane's just like, jump, 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 jump. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so good. Okay. Yeah. Now continue. No, yeah, sorry. So episode nine was, the there was like tons of plot in this one mm -hmm. where she is at the Legion of Doom. Her crew gets put into the hench people pool, mm -hmm. which they sign, Bane signs them out to go blow up a coffee house. And Harley Quinn raises some concerns about like the Joker's plan to just build this tower. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I need $800 million. I could probably do it for six. <laughs> and then she's like, you know, oh, just normal tower, workshop it a bit more, and they go out for dinner, end up getting drunk, and then end up together on a helicopter escaping from Batman, where... He kicks her out of the helicopter, right? Kicks her out of the helicopter yeah. to get away. I did watch that clip on YouTube, even though I missed right. the episode. And that's also because she agreed to go help Ivy um, take down this, like, you know, pollution-inducing plant, and uh, they all see her with the Joker... You know, out of context, essentially. Well, uh, not out of context, but they're all like, you're back with the Joker, you said you were done with him. So she goes on her own and then gets captured because she doesn't have any backup. And uh, there's no plants there because they raised the whole, like, area. Ooh. Yeah. So it was a trap the whole no. time. But yeah, this episode was really great just because of, like I said, there was a lot of plot in that one and just, like, Harley Quinn living it up in the Legion of Doom, and then just basically forgetting her friends and et cetera, yeah. which she realizes after the Joker kicks her out, she's like, oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Kind of thing. But everyone's everyone's out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the crew leave. And then, so 10 was when she goes and visits her family. Yeah, which I saw clips of. Oh, unfortunately. I shouldn't have made you watch it. Sorry. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. Uh, and I know, uh, you know, she has different origins here and there, whatever. Um... Because this, she, like, I wasn't expecting her to have a family, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, 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 yeah. But her mom, you know, Jewish mom and, like, a mobster-type dad, and he basically, someone put a hit out on Harley, and he tipped off assassins to try to kill her <laughs> for a finder's fee. Yeah. And so the whole time, people are trying to kill her, and she's like, oh, it must be the mob because you owe money to them, you idiot dad, kind of thing. <laughs> so they go, and she, like, kills a bunch of mobsters. <laughs> <laughs> and they're back at the house, they get attacked again, and then she gets into a big fight with her family, like, 
real. <laughs> yeah, because so. they're like trying to kill her. Yeah. And I just love that there was like that line uh, from her mother who's like, I just wanted what every Jewish mother wants for you to marry a doctor. And she's like, I, I am, am a doctor. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> Frank comes and picks her up to go rescue Ivy, essentially. The she, plant. Yeah, the plant. Okay. Because yeah. she leaves the house after beating them. She's just like, you're not worth me killing. Yeah. You're not worth my time. I'm a better class of evil. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, episode 11 where Ivy... In the beginning, tries to escape. She, like, murders a bunch of the goons, which is hilarious. And But then she, you know, doesn't manage to get escape. And Harley has to bring the crew back together. To save her. To save her. Which, she, yeah, she gives this good speech and everyone's like, No, I'm not helping you. You're I, <laughs> like, you know, you screwed us over, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, No, it's to save Ivy. And they're like, Oh my gosh, Ivy's in trouble. Let's go. <laughs> and they get on the Harley Quinn Highway. Which, uh, you know, oh, yeah, because she, she was trying to get the mayor to name a hi or yeah. highway after her, yeah. Well, it was funny because she did in that episode where she, like, wanted to steal a nuke to get a highway renamed after her. But yeah. then, I guess, she they changed it to where she, like, had a highway built after her. Nice. <laughs> so it's all a crazy highway and everything like that. <laughs> and uh, even though they managed to... So they go into Ivy's mind in that episode. Oh. You, you didn't see this one? No. Oh, sorry. So Ivy uh, gets dosed by fear toxin. Mm-hmm. And she's like, it's not going to work on me, Scarecrow. Like, you're an idiot. And she's like, he's like, no, no, no. We developed it with your DNA. <laughs> uh, and so it does work on her. So they yeah. go into Ivy's mind briefly to kind of, again, knock her, get her out of it. And then they have to, like, kill her biggest fear. And it's like this Grim Reaper type figure. And they beat, her, beat it up. <laughs> and then it's got Harley Quinn's face. Oh. And so when they're on the highway chase, I, <laughs> Harley Quinn's like, why was Ivy your biggest fear? Like, what's going on there? And she's like, can we do this another time? Like... <laughs> In the middle of the thing and then eventually i realize you know reveals that she was like i don't want to rely or trust other people and yeah. i did and you know you, you screwed us over and blah blah blah. They kind of reconcile a little there mm -hmm. uh but not fully but a little bit which a is good okay, yeah okay but that leads into episode 12 which i saw yes because yeah scarecrow they even though they crash and like they almost win essentially he drives off the highway into the Gotham Lake, which is like a reservoir of water. And then it creates mutant tree monsters. Yeah. They're <laughs> fighting the tree monsters. Yeah. I just watched this. I don't remember. Can you talk? <laughs> I'll jump in. Sure. So they're fighting the tree monsters. I uh, The Justice League shows up. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, the Jerkoff League. And uh, <laughs> they get trapped in the book by Queen of Fables. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. And then she puts them in up a beanstalk, mm -hmm. and Kite Men have to save them. Yeah. <laughs> which is great, because Ivy and Kite Men has been dating the whole time. Yeah, there's been some scenes here and there where yeah. they try to go to a restaurant, and like, yeah, it was great. <laughs> made a rezo kite, comma, man. <laughs> <laughs> Might be under the Kite Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's revealed that Joker is behind the scheme. He built his crazy tower, and it smashes the Legion of Doom. Mm-hmm. Um, headquarters, and he appears on the screen, and he's all like, basically because they let in Harley, that he's like, Legion of Doom sucks. Yeah, it's all Joker now, all day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ivy drinks a bunch of the potion growth thing. Grows. Yeah, it becomes the forty foot tall woman, fights the trees, mm -hmm. but then the Joker spears her through the chest, and she dies, and she goes down. Yeah, yeah, and then they bury her mm -hmm. in a funeral. Yeah. Now we're in season episode 13. That which is in yeah. episode 13, yeah. Harley goes to Batman to try to come up with a plan mm -hmm. to give Joker the one thing he wants, which is Batman. Which is Batman, yeah. But the plan goes wrong. Yeah. Because <laughs> of Clayface. Because of Clayface. So, uh, Clayface, Shark King, King Shark, Dr. Psycho. And Psy. Yeah. And Psy are all kidnapped. By the Joker. They all get captured, yeah. Harley Quinn gets away, and the and Batman is it's also captured, yeah. captured, and Joker takes over the city and it's chaos. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Harley finds out that he's planning on killing her friends and then doing an '80s party. Yeah. And so she kind of goes to Ivy's grave and cries on it and like decides to go do whatever she can to get yeah. them back. 
Which and I liked her plan, where she's like, I'm just going to blow myself up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I'm the thing you want. Yeah. And I'm going to, because you asked for me alive, so I'm going to blow myself up if you don't listen to me. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I like that. And then, uh, so she goes up to the Joker, and makes a deal to put the costume back on in exchange for her friends being released. Uh-huh. And then they both try to double cross each other. They go in for the kiss and they yeah. both stab each other, Jon Snow style. <laughs> both just try to knife each other. Yeah. yeah. They have a big fight. And she's losing. Mm-hmm. And then his he was like, I can't just kill you. Yeah. I have to erase you because you're my only weakness and I can't have you living on. So they take her to a different chemical um, yeah. vat. Yeah. Some kind of thing going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. That'll just take all of her Harley Quinn-ness out of her and she'll yeah. be a normal person. And she, uh, she's like, Did, let me do one more thing. It's Harley. Let me jump in. Yeah. And he's like, okay. But then Ivy's there. She yeah, comes Ivy. back to life, saves yeah. them, saves her. And uh, they throw the Joker in instead. Mm-hmm. And he presses the Yule button to destroy the tower. <laughs> uh, that's right. Yeah. So there's just flames and chaos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and no Gotham, and no Joker, and the crew's back together, and they're happy in the end. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> well, and Batman pushes Harley and Poison Ivy out of the way of a big falling pipe. Oh, yeah, but he gets qu- squashed. Yeah, he gets but- hit by it, and they're like, hey, he's got that polymer suit, right? Yeah, he'll, he'll be, be okay. fine. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a Batman unmasking by the Scarecrow. Oh, that's right. Which was hilarious. But only the Scarecrow <laughs> and Joker saw that it was Bruce Wayne. That's right. Yeah. And, and then, the Scarecrow's dead. Yeah, because Joker was like, well, how would you do that? I didn't want to know. And then he melts Scarecrow's face. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. <laughs> I misread the situation about how much you were talking about Harley Quinn. <laughs> Reminiscing about all the mem- memories you had. <laughs> so good. And then, yeah, the this, this season just kind of ends uh, that. I will watch the second season I because w- I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 100% want a second season. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I thought it was, yeah, like I was saying, it's really well animated. Really well voice acted, Mm -hmm. really well written. Yeah. And I laughed out loud watching it, which I don't always do. Mm -hmm. Unless things are so funny. Well, and I just like the the slightly different take on, like, you know, uh, Scarecrow has, like, a British accent. And, like, Clayface, like I said, just some funny versions of some of these characters. Bane. Bane, especially. uh, Yeah. Like, they're still doing stuff, you know, they're still doing their evil villainy thing. But, like, Bane is, like monitoring the credit card that the kid uses to put out a hit on he's oh yeah it was the nephew puts out the hit on harley quinn oh and he okay. uses a legion of doom credit card to do it and bane goes and he's like i told like whenever you put out a hit you pay in cash <laughs> this is traceable <laughs> and then he's like take the hit off and then he you know he's gonna cut the credit card but he's like these scissors are dull so he just bends the credit card <laughs> <laughs> just stuff like that uh, uh, yeah. so good which i really enjoyed me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would recommend watching it. Yeah, hundred percent. If you haven't watched it already, yeah, go do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we should wrap up. Sure, I guess. I mean, it's been an that, hour. Yeah. Anything else to say about the Harley Quinn show? No, Something. like I liked both of these things with Harley in it. Yeah. Oh, well, you should use your artwork for the cover picture. I did do that Stensley. one. Stencilly. <laughs> it's good. Anyways, yeah, both of these. Were very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, they did a good job of like rounding out the character of Harley. Yeah. And uh, I don't really liked it. <laughs> I think we yeah, have one thing with the animated show, of course, obviously animated, but there's like the bigger cast. Oh, yeah. There versus the movie. But that wasn't the story they were trying to tell in the movie, of course. But no. it's also like, like I've mentioned before, DC, like there was no Oracle. Yeah. When there should have been Oracle fine because they just haven't they don't know what they're doing <laughs> there oh but yeah the animated yeah. show they could you know they could just pluck characters in and out because you know it's just comic book they could just hopefully pull stuff in, so. when they do the gotham sirens the sirens of gotham or whatever they have to fight bat woman or bat girl like well no it's gonna say it. well yeah that'd be great but <laughs> yeah. hopefully when they do it it's successful enough that they could do a poison ivy movie or mm. a catwoman movie right like as separate things and kind of like branch off that way yeah. Since, like, the other side of it's not looking that great. Yeah. Well, and I don't, I didn't look into it further that it's like maybe there is a slated Catwoman movie, but I don't think so. I think I'm, maybe there is. There know. already was one. Well, I mean, <laughs> a newer one. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Fair. I'm unsure. But uh, I think you're right, though. I do remember if we talked about it in the show or 
yeah. off the show, but I think you're right. Zendaya should play Catwoman. Yeah, I think she could do it. She'd be good. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who. And then I was thinking for Poison Ivy, it yeah. could be Olivia Wilde could do Poison Ivy. I think that could work. Isn't she a little... Too old? Yeah. No, she's not that old. <laughs> I, but compared to the other two, like, isn't sure, Margot but... quite young? Oh, you know who they should get? Mm. Cause she has red hair. Mm. Is that actress that no one can pronounce her name? <laughs> Sorsha Ronan? I don't know. She's, Who's she in? She's like... She was in Atonement. She was in the new Little Women movie. Mm. She's, uh, everything she ends what in wins an Oscar. Okay, we'll get for her then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think she, I think she could run an Oscar for Atonement. Mm. She's not very curvaceous, but I think, oh, that's uh, fine. she could do it. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Anyways. Anyways. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, minor complaints about the movie, but they're not like, don't go see it kind of breaking kind of complaints. And, no, I would, uh, I would say it's show... one of the better movies I've seen in a while. Really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, show recommend. Yes. Much better than when I saw Star Wars and I left the theater thinking like, do I actually like movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, I do like movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Anyways, you can find us on social media at Tome of Uselessness, or you can go to our website, which is tomeoflesslessness.com, or mm-hmm. you can email us, which is tomeoflesslessness at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And that's it, right? That is it. Yes, so thank you for listening. Rate Thanks for listening. Review us on iTunes. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>